a lot of people may not recognize me. I've uh, spent the last 50 years exposing the corrupt Rochester, New York Police Department and their long history of abusing and murdering innocent people. Hating black men did not have to die at the hands of a white, trigger happy, murdering, cold blooded cop named Randy Bull. You know what's sad? And I want any media that's here to turn around, just do a 180, and look at the city officials right on the door right now of the city hall. The hall of the pieces. The tax lady people have been left. And I always hate to bring out the race, but race has something to do with everything. And it's sad to say that there's a black man inside those two boys right now that I've been observing for the last 20 minutes or something. And he's laughing. An African American male in the city of Rochester, New York, who is laughing at our cause here today. Now let's break it down real quick. What is our cause? Our cause is that we're calling for answers. It doesn't matter what organization you're with, you don't even have to be in an organization. If you're a living, breathing human being in the city of Rochester, you should be perturbed and sickened and whispered with what happened at 181 Columbia Avenue. And I'll tell you why. Because if you're not, the next time that you, as a citizen of Rochester, New York, call the Rochester Police Department for assistance, you may be calling a trigger-happy ex-Marine gun hall ready to hurt something, ready to kill something in your house, like they did to Hayden Blackman. My father married a girl marched on these same streets in the mid-1980s. We're talking about just over a quarter century ago when Kelvin Green was gunned down. An innocent man, how did he know if they scared because he had some issues, unarmed, shot multiple times, killed. At the time, those that are from Rochester will remember Howard Reddick. The DA, Justify. And let's talk about Justify real quick since I got the, the bullhorn here. Justify. They love that word. But you know what? It said on uh, Park Avenue in Gurdon Place about nine years ago, a young man named Craig Hurd lost his life again. Write that down. They watched Trigger Happy, Cold Blooded. Marine mentality, shoot to kill, ask questions later, let a bunch of black and white Spanish people duke it out later in a city hall meeting. I don't care. I'll shoot. I'm a RPD and I'll shoot. That man's got a knife. I don't care. I'll shoot. And I'm a killer. And guess what? He killed me. And guess what? He's right. And if a bunch of people pissed off, recognize me. I've uh, spent the last 15 years exposing the corrupt Rochester, New York Police Department and their long history of abusing and murdering innocent people. Paid and black men did not have to die at the hands of a white, 
trigger happy murdering cold blooded cop named Randy Brook. You know what's sad? And I want any media that's here to turn around, just do a 180, and look at the city officials right on the door right now of the city hall. The hall of the people, the tax paying people, as they laugh. And it's sad. I'm a Latino. My kids are African American in this community, a Latino, two beautiful boys. And I always hate to bring out the race, but race has something to do with everything. Yes, it does, yes, and it saddens me that there's a black man inside those two doors right now that I've been observing for the last 20 minutes since I've been here, and he's laughing. An African American male in the city of Rochester, New York, who is laughing at our cause here today. And let's break it down real quick. What is our cause? Our cause is that we're calling for answers. It doesn't matter what organization you're with, you don't even have to be in an organization. If you're a living, breathing human being in the city of Rochester, you should be perturbed and sickened and disturbed with what happened at 181 Columbia Avenue. And I'll tell you why. Because if you're not, the next time that you, as a citizen of Rochester, New York, call the Rochester Police Department for assistance, you may be calling a trigger-happy ex-Marine gun hall ready to hurt something, ready to kill something in your house, like they did to Hayden Blackman. You know what's sad? I came to the real estate a long time ago. My father, Mario Vara, marched on these same streets in the mid-1980s. We're talking about just over a quarter century ago when Calvin Green was gone down. Right. An innocent man hiding in a cross they scared because he had some issues unarmed. Shot multiple times, killed. At the time, those that are from Rochester will remember Howard Rellin, the DA, justified. And let's talk about justified real quick since I got the, the bullhorn here. Justified. They love that word. But you know what? It said on uh, Park Avenue in Girton Place about nine years ago, a young man named Craig Hurd lost his life again to two trigger-happy Rochester, New York cops, David Pagan and Serge Savage, who shot him each one time in his hand. A 14-year-old boy who made the wrong choices, who hung out with the bad, kind of, I'm not going to say bad, but ill, Ill influence youth, and they stole a car, but he was scared. Like the late Reverend Gray said, he was scared. On a dead-end street, scared, unarmed. And guess what? Not only did they kill him, but the next day, on the corner of Norton Street and St. Casimir Street, a white, that's right, a white, and I'm making a point here, 20-something-year-old young man, high on huffing. You know what huffing is? When you inhale spray paint cans. It's really popular with a lot of people, especially on the West Coast. He took off when the police came. He hit several police cruisers, including state troopers, sheriffs, RPD. He hit a lady at an intersection, an innocent lady going on her way to work. They chased him for over 25 minutes to the county of Wayne, Wayne County. Guess how his ended? Guess how this case ended? It ended with road spikes and him learning his lesson and going to jail. But a young African-American male in the city of Rochester lost his life. Like Bob Lansbury, who ridiculed him. Bob Lansbury, who people in this city need to start waking up to who Bob Lansbury is. A racist who makes a morning drive every morning from Mount Morris, New York, to Rochester, New York, and injects his sick and racist rhetoric over our airwaves and divides our city every single day. 
You know what? I don't know why I do it, but I always go on his website just to see what other sick stuff he's up to. And I just got done half hour ago before I left my home reading his latest comment. His latest comment is F-U-B-O, which stands for Fuck You, Barack Obama. That is who we have every morning poisoning our airways and supporting cops like Randy Book. Like he said about Craig Hurd, bang, bang, that is hell. He joked about young Craig Hurd slumping over the wheel of the Dodge Stratus that he was driving. The RPD is corrupt. And it's got a long history of corruption. In 1984, Alicia McCullough, with a knife in her hand, in a domestic dispute, was executed by a white officer also. You know what I read the other day? I read about how the New York Police Department became furious at a state assembly legislative act where they wanted to introduce a bill that was a, a, a no-kill bill, which basically would force the police to shoot, to wound, or to stop but not to kill. And the NYPD was livid. They couldn't believe it. Why? Because they love to kill. They think Officer Book was not concerned with stopping hate in black men. The thought, I assure you, the thought did not cross his mind. He shot at what the police are trained to shoot at, ladies and gentlemen, which is called center mass. Center mass is that part of your body just above your waist and just below your neckline. Why do the police choose this spot? Because they know that the shot will be fatal. It's sad, but I guarantee you this. Had that been a white man, had that been a white man holding that knife, he would be recovering right now with a good shot wound to the leg. He would be alive right now, not shot five times and hit three in front of his family, in front of his own stepson, who punched him in the face and disrespected his household minutes earlier when the police came. The Rochester, New York Police Department is corrupt. And it's a joke. Internal affairs is a joke. Explain to me how Officer David Joseph can violate a man named Theodore Laureus Wright in 94 and then do it to me in 96 and in 97. Explain to me how his brother, Nick Joseph, who you guys recognize the name, abused me, beat me, and falsely arrested me in retaliation for me videotaping David Joseph abusing a black motorist during a traffic stop. Explain to me why across the street I want a federal lawsuit against Joseph brothers, David and Nick. Explain to me how Theodore Loria won his lawsuits. And then explain to me why are they rewarded with bad conduct. David Joseph was promoted sergeant of the Rochester Police Department after he beat me, after he falsely arrested me and my brother, after he kidnapped, he kidnapped, he kidnapped a man out of his house. He crossed jurisdiction lines from Rochester into another town. The stuff that I would do 60, 70 years behind bars, he did it to that man right there. He did it to that man, and he got promoted after they walked out one after the other when the federal jury, mostly white, just one black man on my jury, convicted him, but found him guilty, I'm sorry, because it wasn't a criminal trial, found him guilty of multiple civil rights violations. And Nick Joseph, what happened to Nick Joseph? We know what happened to him. Nothing. Internal Affairs didn't do anything. What happened to Nick Joseph? You know what happened? He was, he was able to transfer to the Greece Police Department with nothing on his record. Are you kidding me? This is a guy who across the street in a two-week trial, even Judge Siragusa was shaking his head. 
Because the guy was a scumbag. And he was found, he violated 16 of my civil rights. How can you even violate that many rights of a citizen? And then walk out with an all-white jury except one black person saying, this guy's a piece of trash. He shouldn't be on the force. So how do you get a job with Greece? How do you get a job with the Greece Police Department, ladies and gentlemen? And then, eight years later, you're high on coke and you're drunk out of your ass and you're at spenders all night tricking with women and sniffing lines. Huh? And you're doing an eight ball and you get behind the wheel of a car and you're running to an innocent African-American woman who was pregnant and you send her into premature labor. Explain that one. And explain how David Joseph, who has more lawsuits against them that have been won and or settled by the city of Rochester. Explain how he is promoted to a sergeant. I'll tell you what, here's the thing. Like Randy Book, the RPD wants people on the force that don't have emotions. Write that down. They want trigger happy, cold blooded, Marine mentality, shoot to kill, ask questions later, let a bunch of black and white and Spanish people duke it out later in a city hall meeting. I don't care. I'm shooting. I'm an RPD and I'm shooting. That man's got a knife. I don't care. I'm shooting. And I'm a killer. And guess what? He killed him. And guess what? He's right. You got a bunch of people pissed off about to go in the meeting, and Mr. Blackman is dead. Explain that. And while you're at it, explain to me why a white man is alive with road spikes thrown out. And why a black boy is dead. Okay? And why Alicia McCall is dead. And while you're at it, explain to me why Calvin Green is dead. And here's the thing, and I'll pass the mic. You know what? All the victims I just named are black. And all the cops I just named are white. Uh, David Vera. Thank you, sir. There's a show on TV that I like, it's called the Tosh Point Road Show, and he does something called the Web, Web, uh, Web Redemption. With all respect, and I don't mean to make light of the matter, I feel like I'm doing the redemption. Last time I was here, uh, with all respect to Mr. McFadden, who wasn't involved in the incident, I was very rudely and unfair and unprofessionally cut off. Um, I asked that I be allowed to read uh, something I prepared that would be about three minutes, and I'd be glad if you can ask me some questions. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. My name is David Barber. Some of you may know me by David V. Uh, I'm a filmmaker and freelance writer with the majority of my work centering on exposing the corrupt Rochester Police Department. In a letter recently that Bob Lasbury wrote to the mayor, uh, titled A Note to Mayor Richards, Lasbury told the mayor that he, together with the RPD, should, quote, charge their guns and, quote, attack David Barber. That's me. Lonsbury's letter to the mayor was prompted by my support to Emily Good, who was falsely arrested by Rochester Police Officer Mary Massey, who was upset that Good had videotaped and conducted a racially profiled traffic stop of an African American motorist, despite what Mr. Mazio may want you to believe. Then weeks later, several RPD officers showed up while we were holding a support meeting for Emily Good and then retaliated against innocent citizens by pulling out kids' rulers, pink, hot pink and measuring cars that were parked and raped by a half inch over the law and ticketing them. In his letter, Lonsbury told Mayor Richard that for the past 20 years in Rochester, me and my father, the late Mario Rivera, have been the most passionate and relentless anti-police activists. While I never care for anything that Lonsbury has to say, in fact, all he does is poison Rochester's radio airwaves with his sick, racist rhetoric, I took his statements about me and my relentless passion exposing the corrupt RPD as a compliment. 
Since the mid 80s, when I used to tag along with my dad on these streets, on marches, rallies, and press conference with Al Sharpton, I've seen how the Rochester Police Department has just gotten worse over the years. Having myself went to law schools right across the street in the federal building against the city of Rochester and the RPD, I know all too well how the RPD gets down. And I know internal affairs. And I must say that internal affairs is a joke. In fact, I put it right up there with the current civilian review board, which is now in place, where cases are referred to the Center for Dispute Settlement, which has absolutely no subpoena power whatsoever which has no power, period. Where the outcomes and any recommendations are submitted to the chief sitting next to Mr. McFadden right now for him to have the final decision on what to do. Simply put, it's a roundabout BS way to get to the same end result. The police policing themselves. Yeah. I have a problem with seeing officers such as Lamar Cousins, who I'm, I'm serving on different panels like I learned from the RPD, who, along with Nick Joseph, illegally entered my home in 1997 and beat me and falsely arrested me in retaliation for me having videotaped Nick Joseph's brother, David Joseph, weeks earlier, abusing an African-American motorist during a traffic stop. I have a problem with seeing Officer David Joseph violate Teddy Lawyer's civil rights in 1994, crossing outside his jurisdiction and going into a different town, kidnapping Teddy Lawyer by forcibly removing him from his own home against his will, then David Joseph violated me and my family's civil rights in 96 and 97. Then after I won my federal lawsuit against David Barron, Nate Joseph, Lamar Cousins, Theodore Carini, Jason Barnum, and Thomas Rodriguez, who just like me as a Latino should be ashamed of himself. I, all, I have a problem with cops being rewarded instead of being disciplined. As David Joseph was rewarded after my federal lawsuit when the RPD promoted him to sergeant. <coughs> What do all these cases have in common? At one point or another, internal affairs handle these incidents. And as is the case, 99.999% of the time, sided with the officers involved. A long time ago, I realized a sad thing. Let's just notice it. Officer Caridi is in the room. You should stand up and take a bow. A long time ago, I realized a sad thing. Things don't change. The faces may change, but overall, things don't and especially the corrupt Rochester Police Department, from Alicia McCullough, to Calvin Green, to William Odom, to Vandy Davis, to Craig Hurd, to Hayden Blackman, all African American, and all murdered by white, trigger-happy RPD cops. You see, nothing really changes to the faces of the victims. Thank you, sir. So of this you've already answered in your statement, so I would say this. How much communication did you have with CES or PSS? PSS, in, uh, in 89, I was uh, beaten for a mistaken identity by Goodman and Hyden officers, and that was my first taste of PSS. And when my lawyer, Mira Kurdish, got involved, she quickly uh, put an end to that, because uh, at the time it was Sammy, Sergeant Sammy Drayton, who I believe was also a pastor inside, and um, it, it was a joke. I mean, it was handled up professionally, um, I shared with Mr. Noria, wherever he is in the room, uh, they were like, about one and two now. years. It, it, it dragged, it, it, they dragged my feet against. This was 89, you know? Uh, in my second case, I didn't have, uh, based on my attorney's, uh, you know, uh, job, basically, she, uh, she told me basically that uh, not to go that route at all. I mean, it's, it's, there's no trust. I don't have trust in it. The, the public that I've met and encountered all have the same thing. I have not heard one thing good about the process. It's, it's police policing themselves, and, and that's that's the main issue right there. It's like everybody's mind. Is there anything that you would suggest to improve the process? We need, we need, it's sad. 25 years ago, like I said, my dad called for a civilian review board with real subpoena power and real investigative power. <coughs> what I suggest is the same thing. I'm getting old enough. I'll be 41 next month. And, and it's sad that you know my dad's been gone from this world 18 years. And I carry that pain every day and nothing has changed. It's like, you know, I can't even go to my dad's radio and say, Pop, you know what? We did it. It paid off. Nothing's changed. What I suggest, people know what they need to do. Yeah. It's known. I give you respect. I mean, I know you know, you know, but I know one man can't get it done, and it starts with a civilian review board. <coughs> and the Center for Dispute Settlements, it, it's a joke. I mean, I don't even want to be disrespectful and say it's a joke, but I really can't say nothing good about it. 
and people know. And I really feel, I want to say something last thing, I really feel there's a ticking time bomb in this city. I feel it. I'm on these streets every single day. And I, and I hear you, not older than my, than my son, who will be 10, and the 29th of this month, God bless him, baby. If I hear you saying they're going to take a cop out and mention the Ponzi on the same sentence, something's wrong, guys. Something's wrong. And, I, and, and, and I'm telling you, don't, don't take my word, take the temperature in the streets. It's getting hot. Yeah. 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 Thank you, sir. There's a show on TV that I like. It's called the Tosh.0 Show, and he does something called the Web Web uh, Web Redemption. With all respect, and I don't mean to make light of the matter, I feel like I'm doing a redemption. Last time I was here, um, with all respect to Mr. McFadden, who wasn't involved in the incident, I was very rudely and unfair and unprofessionally cut off. Um, I asked that I be allowed to read uh, something I prepared that'll be about three minutes. And I'd be glad if you could ask me some questions. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. My name is David Barra. Some of you may know me by David B. Uh, I'm a filmmaker and freelance writer with the majority of my work centering on exposing the corrupt Rochester Police Department. In a letter recently that Bob Lonsbury wrote to the mayor, uh, titled A Note to Mayor Richards, Lonsbury told the mayor that he, together with the RPD, should, quote, charge their guns and, quote, attack David Barra. That's me. Lonsbury's letter to the mayor was prompted by my support to Emily Good, who was falsely arrested by Rochester Police Officer Mary Massey, who was upset that Good had videotaped and conducted a racially profiled traffic stop of an African-American motorist, despite of what Mr. Mazio may want you to believe. Then weeks later, several RPD officers showed up while we were holding a support meeting for Emily Good, and they retaliated against innocent citizens by pulling out kids' rulers, pink, hot pink, and measuring cars that were parked away by a half inch over the law and ticketing them. In his letter, Lonsbury told Mayor Richard that for the past 20 years in Rochester, me and my father, the late Mario Vara, have been the most passionate and relentless anti-police activists. While I never care for anything that Lonsbury has to say, in fact, all he does is poison Rochester's radio airwaves with his sick, racist rhetoric, I took his statements about me and my relentless passion exposing the corrupt RPD as a compliment. Since the mid-80s, when I used to tag along with my dad on these streets, on marches, rallies, and press conferences with Al Sharpton, I've seen how the Rochester Police Department has just gotten worse over the years. Having myself won two lawsuits right across the street in the federal building against the city of Rochester and the RPD, I know all too well how the RPD gets down, and I know internal affairs. And I must say that internal affairs is a joke. In fact, I put it right up there with the current Civilian Review Board, which is now in place, where cases are referred to the Center for Dispute Settlement, which has absolutely no subpoena power whatsoever, which has no power, period, where the outcomes and any recommendations are submitted to the chief sitting next to Mr. McFadden right now for him to have the final decision on what to do. Simply put, it's a roundabout BS way to get to the same end we saw, the police policing themselves. Yeah. I have a problem with seeing officers such as Lamar Cousins, who I'm, I'm serving on different panels, I, I learned from the RPD, who along with Nick Joseph illegally entered my home in 1997 and beat me and falsely arrested me in retaliation for me having videotaped Nick Joseph's brother David Joseph weeks earlier abusing an African-American motorist during a traffic stop. I have a problem with seeing Officer David Joseph violate Teddy Loria's civil rights in 1994, crossing outside his jurisdiction and going into a different town, kidnapping Teddy Loria by forcibly removing him from his own home against his will, then David Joseph violating me and my family's civil rights in 96 and 97, then after I won my federal lawsuit against David Barron, Nick Joseph, Lamar Cousins, Theodore Caridi, Jason Barnum, and Thomas Rodriguez, who just like me as a Latino should be ashamed of himself. I, all, I have a problem with cops being rewarded instead of being disciplined. As David Joseph was rewarded after my federal lawsuit when the RPD promoted him to sergeant. <coughs> what do all these cases have in common? 
At one point or another, Internal Affairs handled these incidents. And as is the case, 99.999% of the time sided with the officers involved. A long time ago, I realized a sad thing. But just notice, Officer Caridi is in the room. You should stand up and take a bow. A long time ago, I realized a sad thing. Things don't change. The faces may change, but overall, things don't. And especially the corrupt Rochester Police Department, from Alicia McCullough to Calvin Green to William Odom to Vandy Davis to Craig Hurd to Hayden Blackman, all African American and all murdered by white, trigger happy RPD cops. You see, nothing really changes, just the faces of the victims. Thank you, sir. Some of this you've already answered in your statement. So I would say this. How much communication did you have with CDS or PSS? PSS, in, uh, in 89, I was uh, beaten for mistaken identity by Goodman and Hyden officers, and that was my first taste of PSS. And when my lawyer, Nira Kermish, got involved, she quickly uh, put an end to that, because uh, at the time it was Sammy, Sergeant Sammy Drayton, who I believe was also a pastor inside, and um, it, it was a joke. I mean, it was handled unprofessionally, um, I shared with Mr. Loria, wherever he is in the room, uh, there is about more than two years. It, it, it dragged, it, it, they dragged their feet against. This was 89, you know. Uh, in my second case, I didn't have, uh, based on my attorney's, uh, you know, uh, job, basically, she, uh, she told me basically that uh, not to go that route at all. I mean, it's, it's, there's no trust. I don't have trust in it. The, the public that I've met and encountered all have the same thing. I have not heard one thing good about the process. It's, it's police policing themselves, and, and that's that's the main issue right here. It's like everybody's blind. Is there anything that you would suggest to improve the process? We need, we need, it's sad. 25 years ago, like I said, my dad called for a civilian review board with real subpoena power and real investigative power. <coughs> what I suggest is the same thing. I'm, I'm getting old. I'll, I'll be 41 next month. And, and it's sad that, you know, my dad's been gone from this world 18 years. And I carry that pain every day. And nothing has changed. It's like, you know, I can't even go to my dad's grave and say, Pops, you know what? We did it. It paid off. Nothing's changed. What I suggest, people know what they need to do. It's known. I give you respect. I mean, I know you know, you know, but I know one man can't get it done. And it starts with a civility review board. <coughs> the Center for Dispute Settlements, it, it's a joke. I mean, I don't even want to be disrespectful and say it's a joke, but I really can't say nothing good about it. And people know. And I really feel, I want to say something last thing, I really feel there's a ticking time bomb in this city. I feel it. I'm on these streets every single day. And if, I, if I hear you, not older than my, than my son, who will be 10 in the 29th of this month, God bless him, David. If I hear you saying they're going to take a cop out and mention the pounds you in the same sentence, something's wrong, guys. Something's wrong. And, I, and, and, and I'm telling you, don't, don't take my word. Take the temperature in the streets. It's getting hot. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Yeah. Can't get away with that.